Hello everyone and welcome back to another Techie Bits. Today I am going to be showing you how to navigate the Linksys Smart Wi-Fi interface. And I'm also going to be showing you all of the features that it has and how to use them. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up a Google tab or uh, it'll work on Internet Explorer or any of your other browsers. And you're going to want to type in 192. 2.168.1.1 and this is the IP of the router so typing this into the browser and hitting enter will bring you to the router's interface this usually works on Linksys both Linksys and Netgear routers uh, I don't have any experience with TP-Link or anything like that so I can't tell you for sure on that um, I do have a TP-Link configurable Wi-Fi extender, and I'm pretty sure 192.168.1.1 does work on that. So, um, Once you get into this interface, of course, the password is going to be printed on a sticker on the bottom of your router if this is your first time accessing this interface. So you're going to want to enter that in. Once you're in here, you can actually um, reconfigure that password to a password of your choosing or you can set up smart Wi-Fi so you can actually access this router from pretty much anywhere that you can log into the Linksys account. Linksys also makes an app for your phone so you can access your router through your phone. So I'm going to enter in my password and we'll get right into it. Now what you're gonna see is you're going to see your device that you're logged in on, your router, and your internet connection. If you have green check marks, that means you're connected to all of them. If you have a red X somewhere, that means you're not connected. Something's not connected. Um, it's also going to show you your different Wi-Fi channels. I have a dual band, so that means I have both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Um, 5 gigahertz is not very good for passing through walls, but offers tremendous speed. Um, 2.4 gigahertz is a lot better for passing through walls and stuff like that and giving a stronger connection. So over here you can see you've got the SSID so what that's what it's called and then you also have the password and how many people are on it. This is for the guest network on this one. Um, and then this is the interface for the router. It says how many devices are online, local, guest, so that if you had a guest network set up, this would give you how many people are logged in for that. Parental controls, you can turn parental controls on here um, and choose the specific devices that you want to um, control. Um, then you also have media prioritization down here and external storage, so you can use the router. Uh, it does have a USB port on the back, mine does anyway, to um, store data or information. This media prioritization is Linksys version of QoS. Um, I'll get into that here in a second. So for the guest network, it has its own interface. You can turn that on and you can change all of these, all of these values. Um, getting past that, then you've got your parental control interface and this uh, gives you the specific devices and then you can block internet access, specific times. So as a parent, you could shut off uh, internet to your child's device at a certain time if that's something you're interested in. The smart Wi-Fi interface does offer that. Uh, media prioritization is another thing that these uh, routers from Linksys and the smart Wi-Fi allows you to control. Um, you only have the option to set high priority and then normal priority. By default, everything is set to normal priority. And then to make something high priority, you would just drag it up into this interface and it falls into the box. Otherwise, you can drag it back down and it disappears. You can also select specific applica applications. Your mileage may vary on whether this here works or not. Um, I have not had much luck with it, but this priority QoS does work pretty well. Um, settings. You can restrict download bandwidth, but for some reason you cannot restrict upload bandwidth. Um, I know that at least in the part of the United States that I live in, upload bandwidth for some reason is almost non-existent. It would be nice if you had control for this, but unfortunately on this router and uh, smart Wi-Fi, it does not have uh, control for upload bandwidth. Um, WMM support and no acknowledgement, that's Wi-Fi settings, so we don't need to worry about that. 
Uh, you can set, reset your prioritization. I'm of course not going to do that. You can also speed test your internet. So Ookla, if you've never used it, it's a very useful tool. You can just type uh, Ookla speed test into your browser and you can hit start. It'll test your internet speed, bandwidth, ping, and latency. Uh, that gives you a good idea of what your internet is like. Doing a performance test on here would actually give you direct results from the router completely bypassing any wireless devices. So you can actually test the router and then you can test the Wi-Fi in your devices and you can see if you're losing quite a bit of bandwidth to um, wireless internet or if it's your internet service provider. External storage, obviously if you have this set up for a uh, external hard drive at your router you can configure that here and control that from this interface. Um, I don't have it set up so I cannot access those tabs, they're grayed out for me. Otherwise you can come down here to connectivity and you can control the uh, different configurations to your wireless network. So then this is my 2.4 gigahertz network. This is my 5 gigahertz network. Um, and then of course you've got the passwords for each one of them and you've got your router password. Uh, you can also check for firmware updates manually here uh, or you can check mark the box for automatic so it will automatically update if you have that box selected. Uh, manual, I guess you can choose to do that if you want to uh, manually update it. Uh, and then you can configure your time zone here and then activity lights on the router if it's set in a place where it's going to be bright or uh, bright at night or seen at night and you don't want it seen, you can turn the lights off on the router, uh, on the front of it anyway. Here you can set up your different types of internet connections. So you've got IPv4 and IPv6. I use IPv4, um, it's most commonly used. You can do automatic configuration, configuration DHCP, so that means it's gonna automatically assign um, each of your devices a internal IP address. Um, you've also got your domain name, um, MTU, which is packet size, which auto is the best for that, um, MAC address clone, stuff like that. A uh, little more useful as we start going down the line and getting further into the bottom of this for like port forwarding and stuff like that. This interface allows you to access that and I'll show you how that works. Um, so you got router details, you got DC or DHCP, uh, so you can do your starting IP address obviously one is the router so it's going to start this will be the first IP address that it'll give and then the maximum number of users I have it set to 50 um, so this gives you your IP range um, and then client lease time so this is the max amount that they can have that IP address before it'll reset if you want a static IP address and for some reason it's not working well on your device to select a static IP address and that might be because that DHCP is turned on you can do a DHCP reservation, which basically means that you can um, actively select in this interface the devices that you want to have a uh, static IP address and you can give them specific static IP addresses. And of course it knows what those uh, devices are by its MAC address. So leaving that interface, we can go to the advanced router. You can choose a NAT. This is basically a type of firewall in the router. So you can disable this. Um, I don't recommend it because it leaves your devices vulnerable and it's one extra step that people have to go through in order to hack your devices, stuff like that. It helps people from accessing uh, poor websites and stuff like that. You can disable that for like video games it might say that your NAT type is not open but it's restricted or it's um, closed or something like that. Disabling this could help with that but I would recommend port forwarding or try port forwarding before you ever disable the firewall on your router. So then you can also go to administration, uh, local management access, access via wireless, uh, UPnP which is plug and play. Um, enable, allow users to configure, um, application layer gateway, cut through forwarding, stuff like that. So that's it for that interface. Now we're going to move down to the troubleshooting interface. This is another one that's pretty useful to use. Um, you can ping an IP address straight from your 
uh, straight from your router. So you could ping google.com or you can, if you know their IP address, or you can ping your, uh, your devices and it will tell you, um, give you some information while doing that. Uh, trace routing. This is one of the more useful features. You can remotely reboot the router so you don't have to walk up and hit the uh, unplug it or whatever. That You don't have to do that stuff anymore. You can just hit reboot the router from the smart interface. Uh, router configuration, you can back up and you can restore the firmware, restore previous firmware, um, internet IP address, and then factory reset. That is another option. Do not accidentally hit this factory reset option when rebooting. It will give you a conf confirmation just back out of it so don't accidentally reset your router while trying to reboot it next we're going to move into wireless interface uh, this is just another way to control your wireless interface there's a lot of them on this router or uh, this version of smart Wi-Fi so you've got your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi settings you've got your network name which you configure your you can configure you've got your password you've got your security mode broadcast SID, SSID so if you don't, if you turn that off, it will hide the network basically, and then you got to type type the network into your individual devices. Um, I don't see the need to have this on unless maybe you're in a uh, metropolitan area and you don't want to have your password on for some reason. I'm not a hundred percent sure why you would do this. I'm sure everybody's got their reasons and their uses for it, but you could hide the network if you wanted to. Uh, network mode, channel, channel width. Um, and then you've got the same options for your 5 gigahertz uh, Mac filtering. So this will filter out Mac addresses, or you can whitelist Mac addresses. Um, I have that disabled, of course. So this would be blacklisting, this would be whitelisting. Um, we will go into Wi Fi protected setup. So this is uh, some devices require you to. Uh, do Wi-Fi protected setup. Um, it's kind of a pain, but it does offer uh, different settings. Um, I'm not sure that my router actually has the push button to uh, start this process. So this is a button right here that can start that process for WPS. So you would press this. This is the router pin, obviously, and then the device pin, which you can set up here. Now into the real meat and potatoes of this video is port forwarding. Everybody wants to know about port forwarding because this is the easiest way to set your video games up to have the best throughput, throughput times, response times, stuff like that for the best gameplay experience. Uh, this router does offer and wi uh, Linksys Smart Wi-Fi does offer the option to port forward for your devices. But first, looking at this, so here's the firewall again. This is some other firewall settings. Um, like I said, I recommend leaving this on. Yes, if you were having trouble connecting your devices to the internet, you could turn this off, but I strongly uh, don't recommend this. Um, filter anonymous, filter multicast, filter internal NAT, filter event port. DMZ, you can turn this on, source IP, destination IP, you can you can do internal routing and stuff like that. And then port forwarding. So, if you want to port forward a device, you click on this, you basically, you add a new single port forwarding, you can enter your application name or the computer name or however you decide to specify doing that. Select the port that you need um, by typing it into here. So, uh, external port, we go 523 or 32, 532, and then we'll select both. We want both TCP and UDP, and then we'll select our device IP. Um, you can find this by accessing your Wi Fi adapter settings if you're using. A, uh, a Windows device, but if you don't have access to um, the IP address on the device itself, you can actually come up to the device's interface, which is that very top interface, my network of course, you can see the devices that are online, 
and then you can just click the info button and the info button will open up the device so if you know the name of the device so um, if my computer is called Techie Bits, um, it'll show up in here as Techie Bits up here at the top and then um, the information about the device including the MAC address and then the IP address of the device as it's set up so when you want to port forward you want to go back to so you want to find that number you want to come back to this interface and connectivity and local network you want to click DHCP reservations and you want to reserve that that IP address to that device only uh, based on its MAC address once you find the IP address in device list then once that is done you can come back down here to security apps and gaming single port forwarding and you can enter the device IP address that you just made static into this box down here and then uh, you'll click save and then apply and then OK your router may disconnect all devices when it does this uh, your mileage may vary as far as that goes you can also go to port range forwarding um, do a start port and end port uh, so here I'll, I'll open it up here you can do an application name start port end port protocol and then the device IP of course so you still need to make that static switch over here to port range triggering you can add the device or application uh, triggered range forwarded range and then save it so you can basically reroute ports through your router um, so yeah fairly easy interface to use I do enjoy using this uh, smart Wi-Fi it's nice to use um, I have used the Netgear one if I do end up getting my hands on a Netgear router I will also do that interface in another video so I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you guys learned something um, if you did hit that thumbs up button um, if you thought the video was terrible obviously hit that hit that thumbs down button and if you want to see more content like this, more guides, more walkthroughs, unboxing, tech reviews, and stuff like that, please, please hit that subscribe button. But until next time, YouTube, have a good one.